Welcome. This is the Get Cash Maintenance Project. It's May the 27th, 2022. Uh, topics for today. So, uh, Rushikesh, are there questions that you have that we want to be sure we address? What topics are of concern for you? Oh, I'm still uh, concerned about the architecture itself, you know, uh, like how, how are we going to proceed? Like, Okay. And so, so let's talk some more about that. So, so I think you had said that you're okay with the idea that uh, cash maintenance happens in the background. Right, so it, it, it runs, probably runs on a separate thread. Asynchronously, yes. Yes, async inside the Jenkins, in the Jenkins uh, controller, uh, running a separate process, get process to do the work. I was thinking of a, you know, a queue, you know, so that I put the task into the queue and then you use another thread to, you know, dequeue everything from that queue to run the, run the maintenance uh, task. And I think, I think that makes sense. And I believe that there is a concept of queuing inside Jenkins that you can use. So use a queue to, and the concept there would be to keep uh, basically a relatively few maintenance tasks running concurrently. So yeah. we don't want to overwhelm the thing with too many maintenance tasks. Basically, I think a maximum of uh, five maintenance, five, uh, you know, get maintenance tasks will be put if all of them are set at the same time you know okay so uh, i have a question here um we want to use a queue uh, as far as i understand queues are used when you want to decouple two concepts you don't want to have a tight coupling between two things so you use a queue so that you push something and then your, so there's a producer who would push something and there's a consumer yes. who would then take it whenever they have the resources or the time it's, it's in their control. So, uh, since we know that these tasks that we're running are going to be scheduled at some frequency that we've configured ourselves, is there a way, is there a reason or is there a possibility that our, um, Initial, let's say the first job or process hasn't finished and there would be other processes that have started um, happening. And that is why we need something like a queue to make sure that that doesn't happen and uh, we're managing it. We want a queue for that. I, I, don't, I am not clear what, why would we would use a queue here. Oh, I, I thought of a queue because, you know, uh, we have discussed in the meet, you know, that we want to run the maintenance task sequentially. Okay. So assume, uh, assume a queue, which has like five, uh, two, two or three maintenance tasks, you know, like a prefetch, a G, uh, you know, and a commit graph uh, and uh, a GC, for example. Okay. So uh, uh, whenever the, uh, you, uh, uh, I, it, I check whether the queue is empty or not. If the queue isn't empty, I remove the for I uh, dequeue the first element, and then I run all the maintenance tasks. You know all the you know uh, I run that maintenance task on all the uh, git caches, and then after that finishes, then I continue for the you know next maintenance task. But this thing happens only when all uh, the maintenance tasks are scheduled at the same time, like you know same cron schedule, like every minute or every hour. That time only this this case happens. Otherwise, if it's for different uh, uh, cron uh, syntax, that time I think only one uh, maintenance task would be uh, pushed into the queue. Hmm. No, but uh, my still my question is that like Mark has written, we want to do control resource consumption, right? So if we were not sure what would be the uh, amount of time a process takes or we are not sure about the incoming processes that are going to come while my uh, 
existing processes running on the controller, then we would want to use a use a queue which would make sure that we don't overload the controller but if we're for an example if i know that i have uh, exposed an endpoint that is going to be that is going to be we're going to push uh let's say ten thousand messages and that is how you've built your controller right to consume ten thousand messages and um, process them let's say i i push a million messages within a second so you you need a queue or something like that to to not overload your system. But when you know that the processes that are going to run are going to run in as finite time and you yourself are the originator of the next set of tasks that are going to come there, then why would you need something like that? Well, but but you made an assertion there, Rishab, that I think hmm. I think is is not precise, right? In that hmm. that the maintenance tasks, we actually don't know their duration. Duration. Git GC of the Linux kernel could be minutes. And in fact, it could be much longer than that if the computer is under memory pressure or relatively lower performance. And, and mm -hmm. whereas fetch of most repositories is seconds or take the other, the other end, fetch of the Linux kernel over a slow link could be an hour or more. It's a two gigabyte I, repository. I, and so if we were trying to, if we had just a, the beginnings, the first few commits and we did an incremental fetch and it's now recover, retrieving two gigabytes of data, that that is a very unpredictable duration. Yes, that's true, that's true. So that means then I, I'm not sure how much time it would take. And that is why I don't want to, uh, yeah. So I want to keep them separate and I, I have a layer in between like a queue, which would make sure that I consume a task only when the first one or the previous one is complete. At, at least that, that was my mental model. Rushikesh, does that, does that fit for you or what, what were you envisioning? This is what I was thinking, but you know, that I then again I was thinking of an edge case where you know, assume uh, like I, I, I do a GC maintenance task on all the maintenance that I, uh, you know, get main uh, get caches when I do that, okay, and uh, assume there's uh, another uh, maintenance task which is scheduled hourly, okay. So, you know, uh, and if this GC task and another maintenance task, like a prefetch, both have been set at the same time. So two maintenance tasks would enter the queue. Uh, and uh, assume the uh, G garbage collection is, uh, takes another one hour. Okay. If, it, uh, if there are too many uh, repositories on the Git, uh, Jenkins controller, uh, then more tasks would be added to the uh, maintenance, uh, to the queue. And the previous maintenance tasks also wouldn't have been executed. I think there would be a duplication of maintenance tasks on the queue. So, so, but the, the condition you're describing sounds like sort of what I would expect, right? If garbage collection is processor intensive and is going to take 60 minutes, I don't think we want the prefetch that was scheduled after it to begin until the garbage collection is done, do we? Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't. But assume the 60 minutes has finished and, you know, again, the cron syntax executes for, uh, you know, uh, after 60 minutes because we, uh, you, we set prefetch. So there would be two prefetches in the queue or, you know, another commit graph in the queue, uh, which would, uh, uh, you know, there would be a duplication of two uh, uh, tasks in the queue is what I was Ah, ah, I see what you're saying. Okay, right. So, so you're, you're concerned. Okay, so how do we, so I guess the question there is, do we need to handle duplication, duplicates that arrive in the queue, that are, are in the queue? So should the queue, as, as now I, now I have to make a, a match to my Jenkins job experience. So a Jenkins job uh, a Jenkins freestyle job, let's be very precise. Jenkins freestyle job with its parameters, a queued Jenkins freestyle job with its parameters will be replaced, i.e. not executed, 
if a new job, a new a, a Q Jenkins build, build is the correct word, if a new build is scheduled with the same parameters. So this is the way that the Jenkins freestyle pro job handles the duplication problem you were just describing. And, and so I think mentally, or are you, are you suggesting we may want to allow that in the queue, if, if a particular repository has a prefetch assigned and another one is scheduled, we discard the second one because we've already got one scheduled. Yes, that was what I was thinking. So discard duplicates rather than add, than add them to the queue. And, and I think that makes sense. Make, yeah, because it wouldn't make sense adding it to the queue that both of them running at the same, like one after the other. Yeah, yeah. well, for instance, don't schedule a second GC when a GC is already scheduled. A second, a second GC of a repository when a GC is already scheduled and would we say already scheduled or in progress? So if we're already doing a garbage collection, scheduling another one of the exact same repository seems unlikely to be helpful. Rishab, you look like you're perplexed. Does that make any no, sense? No, no, I was, I just, I was trying to understand um, asynchronous processes in Java. I was just looking at uh, different ways to do it. So, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I was just lost a little bit. So, okay, great. All right. Uh, but I, I guess that makes sense, you know, this uh, discarding duplicate. I, I was thinking that we would have a way to um, identify a particular job or a process using a unique identifier. And we it, that would be calculated based on the parameters that we've defined for a particular process. So, so if the identifiers match, then we probably could discard it or whatever. Either way, we could do it to discard the two pieces. Okay, well, so hang on, let's take that. So a maintenance task should be, we think should be uniquely identified by the repository it is processing, the task it is performing. Okay. And then the idea is only one in the in the queue at a time. Yes. Only one. You only. Yeah. So. Queue contains unique unique tasks. Okay, Rushikesh. Was that helpful to have that discussion or is that just making it more confusing? Uh, it's fine, but I have a doubt. Is there any way of getting, you know, the uh, the path of all the Git caches on the Jenkins controller? Yes, there is. Yeah. So, um, so is there a way? So is there, a, at least I'm pretty sure there is because to list all the caches on the controller. Uh, if if worse comes to worse, what you do is list the directory contents. Okay. But I think, I believe there is actually a cache, a cache method in. Let's see, is it Rishab? Do you remember? Is it SCM API? Because, or maybe, yeah, it was last year's project, wasn't it? Um, that we had an SCM cache on the controller that we were relying on as a way to answer size questions. Oh, yes, yes, hang on. Now I think we can find it. Just a minute. You've prompted me. So someplace in here, there is a concept of a cache. Git tool chooser. Isn't this the one that knows how to find the size of a repository? 
guess it would calculate the size of the cache and then choose a tool. And the size, where is, okay, size of repo. So here we go. So there's a repository size cache and that size cache, if I remember right, knows how to look inside. Yes, here it is. Abstract get SCM source dot get cache mm -hmm. entry. So there is inside the get plugin, this get cache entry method that for a given repository URL or here get cache dir, I think is the one we want, right? The, the, the directory, we want the, the folder on the file system that contains the cache. And here it is. So abstract get SCM source dot get cache dir will for a given repo. Now that doesn't give us the list all of them, but I bet inside abstract git SCM source, we can find that just a minute. And if not, you could add a, add a method. It certainly knows what the caches are somehow. Okay, so keep one lock per cache directory get remote, get includes, get browser. Maybe we look for a file. Cashter, okay, so get cashter. Okay, get cashter is here. Here it is iterating over the. Okay, so it says cashter. Give me one. If it's a direct, not a directory, create it. Cache entry. Oh, okay, that's. Is cache entry is the location? Yeah, so well, so here, let's let's look at it. I need to use Emacs instead, so we can also use it for operating system functions. So here, let's look at it on my installation. So this is the file, or this is the directory, the folder that that code is looking in. And you can see it here, it's got a bunch of caches in it. And if we look at this one, here's a .git file, with a config. This one is Jenkins Pipeline Utils. And if we look at this one, we'll hope it's not the same thing. Pipeline Utils Private. So, so there definitely is in abstract get SCM source, it knows the list of local caches. And now I, I didn't see an iterator that lets us iterate over all the caches. So for that, you may have to extend this class to give it a way to walk across all of them. Tree walking SCM probe. No, that's not it. Yeah, so I think you may have to extend abstract get SCM source so that it it knows it gives us a way to ask for the next cache folder or an iterator over the cache folders. So Hrushikesh, did that answer that question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so abstract get SCM source. Uh, find the caches, find a cache for a repository, abstract get SCM source. No obvious method to iterate all caches, you could add one. So we would have a cache entry per get SCM source. 
I, I can see that the git, git cache entry has been populated by the git scm source remote feed. That is how abstract git scm source is expecting it or populating it. So, so you you made two statements there. One was you used the word every, and I'm not sure that it's every. At least I think, for instance, if all I do is run a freestyle job. Hmm. I won't get any cash for it because there isn't any benefit to that cash. If instead I'm running a pipeline job in order to do, in order to do the execute, the Jenkins file of the pipeline job, that mm. pipeline job has to check out a copy of the, of the repository on the controller. Now, if it's got access to the GitHub API, it can get the Jenkins file without requiring a full clone of the repository. Likewise with Bitbucket, I believe in Giddy. But if it's using generic Git, it mm -hmm. doesn't have those APIs available. So it has to ask for the whole repository. And in that case, I would expect it to be cached. So, so did, did that answer your question, Rishab, or is there something I missed? No, it did. It did. I just I was just looking at the the way they are trying to get the cache entry because that is how we get the cache directory. So I was just looking at how that cache entry is being tied to the Git SEM source. That's it. I was just looking at that. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So Hrushikesh, are you? Are you feeling comfortable with, with that idea that you may have to extend abstract get a CM source to give it away to iterate over all the caches? I, 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 I'll uh, try it out once and then I, I can get back to you. Okay, great. Yeah, so if on your Jenkins installation, you can look, or on a Jenkins installation, you can look and see examples of this um, in the caches directory. Now you may say, oh, but I'm not sure I've got that a caches directory. And if, if you find that you don't have a caches directory, that may mean that you haven't run a pipeline yet or haven't run a multi-branch pipeline. If it would help you, you are welcome to use a toy environment that I maintain as a Docker image uh, if you need a, a wider sample wider of Jenkins configuration, see this thing, and I'll paste it here. There's a repository I, I keep that has um, things that help me and are, I think has, it has interesting configurations in it, many job definitions, multiple plugins installed, et cetera. And if you're, if that helps, you can use it and you start it with docker underscore run. Um, and build it with docker underscore build. It, it's so it requires docker container, but it what it does is gives you a, um, it's a Jenkins controller with, with several interesting jobs. Now I've got a much more complicated version of it that's stored with credentials embedded in it, et cetera. And that one is private. I, I can't make it public because it's got credentials stored inside. So back to the, the iterating over the caches on the controller, Rishikesh, you're okay if uh, with the, the task, hey, let, look through abstract, get a CM source, See if you can identify how you would iterate over the entries there and 
and decide if work need, is, needs to be done, etc. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I just want to go look into it. And okay. Um, yeah. I just I, I thought that it would be beneficial if there was a document which defined um, the architecture of the SCM. I remember Mark shared that when I was doing my project initially. Um, this was written by Stephen Stephen Connolly, I believe, which outlays the fundamentals of um, how Jenkins has implemented management. So I believe that would be helpful. I'm just trying to find that document. Yeah, I wonder if that's okay. So let's see if we, yeah, I thought that was in the in the maybe the writing an SCM plugin, no. Well, uh, there, here's, okay, here's, oh yes, here we go. SCM consumer guide and implementation guide. Okay, so, so here's this one, writing an SCM plugin and then if we follow that, So, there, down, there are references. it's yeah. this one, the consumer guide. So those who are calling the SCM API are here and it gives an overview of the different concepts and, and how they are used. And then there is the implementation guide here that we hope the Git plugin is a correct implementation of, of the SCM API. If you find something mistaken there, by all means, let us know. So is that what you were alluding to, Rishab, or did I, is, is there more than that? Yes. Okay. I was, uh, and uh, the question that I have related to this, which I think, I don't know if you've answered already or not, is that um, the way I see it, the, this work or this um, handling these processes is that this is above the layer of um, a particular uh, job or a pipeline. So when I was working in the Git plugin, I remember that I always had this concept that I'm going to get a job, which could be a freestyle, could be a pipeline, and then I have to do some work on it. and give my results whatever th that is the function that i had to write and th that was the environment or context which i was working under with rishikesh works what i understand is we need to go above that um layer right we need to go above that because we are actually sitting at the uh, sitting at the place uh, where we decide when and where the control uh, the jobs are going to run or who, whoever is publishing these jobs so Hey, does that come so now my, my question is i'm sorry that i it's a long winded question is that is this within the purview of the git plugin is this code uh, can this code reside within the git plugin or does it have to be above that some uh, core infrastructure jenkins level good question and since since the git plugin has things that it configures at a global level I think it's safe for this to be inside the Git plugin, but okay. but for me, it's there. There are things that the Git plugin configures globally, and this will be effectively another significant, large, and interesting global configuration where, yes, maintenance tasks should never be more than this many in the this many running concurrently. Yes, maintenance tasks should prefer to start. Sunday morning or things like that. That's what I was thinking anyway. Hrushikesh, does that does that align with what you were thinking? Were you thinking something different? I was thinking the same from uh, running the tasks that we are operating. But but you know uh, the there there were there were some other problems which I was uh, thinking about like you know when we are scheduling tasks. Uh, uh, there, there, there are front syntaxes where you can run a maintenance task every minute, 
okay like there are some taxes there i was thinking can we prevent users from running maintenance tasks like that you know there should be like a base uh cron syntax like you can start a uh, running task only hourly and then you know start from hourly only you can't run any maintenance task below one hour like you know every 30 minutes or every 15 minutes or every five minutes uh, the minimum uh, base, uh, you know, for a syntax for cron should be starting hourly, you know. So that's that was what. I so, and I, I have no objections to that. One of my worries to go along with that is if I imagine a Jenkins controller like ci.jenkins.io, a large Jenkins controller. Uh, ci.jenkins.io has, let's see, probably 2,000 multi-branch pipelines, uh, each with um, from five to 50 jobs. So with that number, we could have as many as 10,000 jobs on that, that large Jenkins controller. Um, if, if I asked to schedule even hourly, 10,000 maintenance tasks may still not complete, right? Because if they're all the Linux kernel or they're all variants of some large repository, it could just be a long time. So, so isn't this safeguard that you're suggesting should we have that we've got to have that form of safeguard somehow without making it time-based but rather making it don't overload the jenkins controller is that am i being clear in my phrasing or have i have i misstated something but here uh, scheduled 10,000 uh you know maintenance tasks which you're written here all of them will be happening sequentially, right? They will. That's at least that was my assumption. My assumption is because we're queuing, we yes. queue them, they will be sequential. So it, it shouldn't overload the controller. But the user may say, hey, I've got 10,000 maintenance tasks in the queue and I'm only processing 100 maintenance tasks an hour. I will never empty the queue. That, that that was the, the thought I was seeing. And so I think we may have to have a way to, maybe it's maybe not safeguard them, but alert them. Should we, we have, should we graph the queue length over time? So admins can see if they've got, if they're scheduling too many. And I don't know if that makes any sense, but We've, we've got the concept of these graphs over time that already exist in Jenkins elsewhere. If we look at the uh, system load graph, if I can bring it up, I think I can find it here. Let's look at this one. So node, no, not, not I don't remember where it is. Oh, oh, wait a sec, I know where it is. It's under system load statistics, here we go. So this, this picture shows, shows the, let's look at it. Yeah, here's a good picture. This shows executors that are online, busy, and how long the, the run queue is. And, and it, it, it's, it's something like this might help the administrator know if they had scheduled maintenance too frequently. I, I don't know that we have to do that, but it's, it's an option. Rushikesh, you're quiet. I'm worried that I'm I'm blathering. I'm saying things that aren't helping. What can we uh, do to help? I, 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 no, no. I was thinking of this, uh, you know, uh, situation because as we are running maintenance tasks sequentially, okay. So the, uh, assume now I'm uh, running the uh, common graph maintenance task. 
So when I'm running commit graph maintenance, it just asks all the repositories of the commit, uh, uh, all the repositories on the Jenkins controller, uh, you know, would run the commit graph maintenance task. So I don't think it is required to put it in a queue. Once I finish this, then I take out the other maintenance task from the queue and then again run all of the, you know, uh, maintenance tasks on the git uh, caches present on the controller. I don't see, you know, why uh, we need to add the git caches in the queue. Okay. All right. Good. All right. So what you're saying is no need to add the caches to the queue for just specific. Add, add, I was like, just add the maintenance tasks, with really like information, like, you know, uh, such as, you know, the prefetch, the commit graph, the GC. And once you remove the uh, information from the queue, then we can iterate through all the repositories uh, present on the Jenkins controller and run, run all of them. Oh, oh, I see. So you're... Okay, your concept is is different than the one I was envisioning. I was envisioning yeah. that that the iteration was by repository, but your concept is let's let's admit that the task is garbage collection, and we're going to garbage collect all repositories. Mm. At, now, isn't there a danger there that that someone may say, I don't want you to garbage collect my Linux kernel repository, but once a month. Oh, uh, okay. Then I need to think of, okay. So we need to have some kind of set feature or settings in the, you know, maintenance UI page. Well, I think it's a good question. Do we iterate over the, over tasks? GC, prefetch, uh, it was what was the graph calculation one? Oh, commit graph. Commit graph. Commit graph. Thank you. Commit graph. Dot dot dot. Or do we iterate over repositories? Iterate over tasks, and process all repositories. I mean, that has the nicety, that has the very nice thing that the user interface is much more straightforward then, isn't it? Mm -hmm. By iterating over tasks, you say, how often do you want to garbage collect? And, and it's one single setting. We're not worrying about how many repositories are there that are cached. That's, that's a very elegant idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that. That's very good. Okay. Iterate over repositories. And, but the problem with iterating over repositories is that then me needs much more complicated maintenance, much more complicated interface, user interface. Good, very good, okay. So prefer to iterate over tasks to perform all of a single, a task on all repositories. Good, okay. Well, now, now with that small set, does that, I guess we still need a queue, don't we? Even if it's going to be a relatively small queue. Go ahead, Rishab. Yes, so my question is, uh, I think that's a, this is a great point, but what I want to understand here is that uh, there's a trade-off, right? If we're not letting the user decide um, the, the repository where they want to run this maintenance task, how do, if we're going to, uh, so then the assumption is that our system is not going to care about the size of the repository or the parameters of the repository. We're going to care about um, running a maintenance, pushing a maintenance tasks and then executing it over all the repositories. Hmm. But then I, I, I believe we discussed there were issues with that. For an example, if we're running GC, and if we start GC as the first maintenance tasks, and then we're going to run that all over the system, since that being a combinational heavy tasks. Uh, so do we want to then have the awareness to understand um, how do we make sure that whatever tasks we're running, because I understood initially that since the user has the ability to decide uh, the task and the, re the resource on which that task is going to run on, 
that is the pipeline or the sorry the repository then it would be easier for it it's it's a work that we don't have to, to do and that is to um make sure that we're not over utilizing the over utilize uh, the over utilization of the controller is not happening but now since the user does not have an option to decide the repositories we need to make sure that either we have the intelligence within our system to figure out the kind of tasks we are running and the kind of um utilization that they're going to take once they started to run because we're going to run them across the the whole controller right with all the repositories so it, yeah. so i'm not sure i understood the could you repeat the last part of your sentence again it was if that we need to run the 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 thing we will need to check is that we are running the maintenance task over all of the repositories but that that is not overloading the system ask your question again rishab sorry for my not being able to keep up no i actually i think i'm i'm thinking my i'm just thinking out loud probably so i'm just thinking if that is something that we need to worry about or not so my question was that if we are not giving the user an option to decide on upon which repositories they want to run these tasks then what we are doing is we are just making sure that okay this is the schedule i'm going to run a gc on all of the repositories hmm or i'm going to run commit graph on all of the repositories okay i guess it's it's not a question mark i i i guess i i think this there is no problem doing that Uh, okay. I was even thinking. I was thinking of on you know a way where you know so a user can you know enter a you know a regular expression or you know the minimum size and while processing uh each maintenance uh you know each get cache we can check all these conditions which the user has put and then uh check if he wants to run that uh you know a uh, get uh, repository you know run maintenance task on that repository or if he uh, skip it. That was what I was thinking. One like a fil where, filter, like a filter, yeah. Okay, yeah, that that that. See, for me, I think I think you would already have something useful and helpful if we had a single page that said, "Here are the five maintenance tasks. When would you like to them to start?" and how frequently would you like them to run that's already something quite useful and and that will i think help performance already of of operations then and if you then later extended it with added the additional filtering if you'd like or or do something you know something more sophisticated but first first round of iterate your garbage collection how often commit graph how often prefetch how often isn't that already something that that would be valuable to users and and you could do it independent of of the of all sorts of other things i agree iterative approach is always best right it's better to Yeah, work on the first one. So start start with with a simple. Yeah. Okay. So so Rushikesh, are you okay with that idea? Then I think I think this was your key concept, and I had missed mm -hmm. it. Iterating over tasks, I like that yeah. a lot. Uh, that that was what I I have worked on. I even made a class diagram on this. If you are, I can share it in the you know Git plugin channel. Uh, the UI also I have a uh, made a sample UI. It's present in the in my proposal. Okay, a sample UI. I haven't used the latest UI uh, things in that, but that that that's something you know. Like that's like a start. So. Good. Well, and and I think that's a great, that's already a great thing that you could begin coding now is implement the sample UI, be ready to show it, and we could have a conversation about, hey, here's how the UI, because the first experience the user has is with the UI. So I like that. Good. 
good. Now, are you and you're familiar? You've seen at least the design library on yes. week. Good. Okay. Good. I like that very much. Now, I apologize. We're almost at the hour, and I'm. It's late my night. I'm. I'm a little bit weary. I'm unavailable next week because I'll be out of town. Rishab, you'll provide the Zoom link. It'll be a different link than the one that's in our meeting. And the yes. two of you can meet separately. Now, do you have permission to to edit this? This? Oh, yes, you do. Good. Okay. okay. So you've got a way to edit the notes. Be sure you record the session. And hmm. then after I return, I'll help so that we can upload it to YouTube so that we've got it recorded got it. publicly. Got it back. Yes. Sure. All right. Next session in a week. Mark will miss the session. Okay. Rishab, uh, send the URL, record the session. Great. Roshikesh, anything else that we should discuss in the last few minutes before before I go go to sleep? I have nothing else now. Those are the things I wanted to discuss. Okay. Now I apologize that the recording from our last session isn't available yet. I will do my best to get it ready within 24 hours. Fact, maybe what I should do is let's end now. I'll go upload those. At least then I can give you a point or two of them uploaded, even if I haven't finished all the processing of them, because then at least you've got access to them. Yep. Would that would that work okay for you? Yes. Great. Let's do that then. Rishab, anything else from you? No. And Frushikesh, anything okay. from you? No. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and call the call our session done for today. Yes, I, I just uh, sorry, uh, our session is on Wednesday, right? Not on Friday.